Okay, welcome back. In this video, I'll show the very basics of using audio in Max MSP. So the first thing you need to know is that in Max, we need to explicitly turn on and off the audio. There are several reasons why, but one is that if we make errors, we don't want to hear them. And there are also several ways that you can turn the audio on and off. This is called an easy DAC or digital analog converter. And you can click it to turn it on. I'll turn it back off. Also in the corner of your screen in Mac 7, there's a power button actually for turning the audio on and off and a master gain slider here. So another thing to note is that we've been working only in Max so far, the Max part of Max MSP. Audio objects or MSP objects, they're sometimes referred to, their patch cords look a little bit different. So all of the patch cords that we've used thus far have been gray. These cords are green and black striped, and this designates that it's a different kind of data that the audio objects are using. So it's a different signal. So let's check out what's happening in this basic patch. So up here we have what's called a playlist object. And in it I have loaded just a basic audio file that comes with Max. The way that I got it into my patch was by coming over to this icon on the side that looks like a music note. This is your audio icon. And there's a bunch of built-in sounds with Max. So you could just take these and you can sample them here. Turn that up a bit for you. And you can just drag them straight into the patch. And when you drop them, it automatically creates this playlist object. So a playlist object is just a UI for playing a sound file. You can loop the sound files. Oops, guess what I need to do? Turn my audio on. And turn my volume sliders up. So I can loop them. I could pick just one small loop point. So there's a lot of things that this playlist object does. So let's take a look at the help file for some examples. So first of all, you can have more than one file in a playlist. So you see here a bunch of different options. So let's go ahead and play them. All right. You can add different files so that you can have multiple files at once. So, so far I've just played them back by clicking on the play button but I can also play them back by sending numbers into my playlist. So the number that I send corresponds with the clip number in my playlist. So this drum loop is the second clip here, and I'm gonna give it a two then to play the drum loop. If I say zero, it will stop. I can also use messages, pause, and resume. There's some more advanced stuff in here like time stretching, pitch shifting, etc. So you can take a look at that if you're interested. I won't cover it in this video. Let's go back and look at another way of getting sound into our patch. So I showed the built-in samples over here in this audio icon, but you could also just go to a finder window in your computer and click and drag another sound file right into your patch. And again, it automatically creates a playlist object. If I wanted, I could also drag it straight into an existing playlist and see this red line at the bottom will let me add it. Make this a little bigger so we can see. And if I took a different one, let's say I decided I didn't want this cardboard box beat, I can actually replace it by dropping it right onto an existing playlist. All right, so you see on this side, I have this one audio file, channel one and channel two, that's left and right, coming out into these gain sliders, which I had to turn up. Oops. When I press play, you can see on the right-hand side of each gain slider, there's a meter level. So you see my meter is pretty low. And I also have this scope object showing oscilloscope visualizations of the sound that's coming in. That's not very pretty. I'll make it a little better. Coming out of the gain slider then is my finished audio. So I'm affecting the audio here from the playlist by changing its volume. So that's one way that you can change audio. There's a ton of other ways. 
but this is the audio that I want to actually send to my speaker or to my DAC. So I take my left channel and my right channel and send it into this easy DAC object. Left inlet for channel one, right inlet for channel two. So if I do it this way with two gain sliders, I can actually change the volume separately if I wanted to. There's a tiny little cord here that's connecting them right now. Let's get rid of that. And now I can change my left and right speaker volume separately. All right, so that's one option. This meter, this is a meter object here, and this is a gain slider, just a gain tilde. Notice, by the way, that audio objects or MSP objects have this little tilde after them, which denotes that they're audio objects. Typical Max objects don't have them, and that's another way to know what kind of data the object is processing. On this side, I have just another object that combines the meter and the gain slider, and it looks a little bit different. If you're an Ableton person, this might look a little bit more familiar because this is an object developed with Max for Live. It does the exact same thing, except that it's just integrated into one object. So here's my volume. And you can see my meter is also showing here. So lastly, I just want to mention that the playlist object is new in Max 7. So if you're working in previous versions of Max, which probably you aren't because it's been out for so long, but if you are, there are also more antiquated now ways of doing sound. And these involve buffers or SF play you might see, but typically because the playlist object works really well and it's a very clean interface, you see a lot of patches now just using the playlist object. But keep in mind, this is not the only way that you have to trigger sounds or to play sounds or to save them in Max.